Welcome back to the final segment of our show this morning. We are joined by representatives of the Rotaract Club of mm -hmm. Belize. Good morning. And we're here to talk about World Rotaract Week, Marlene. That's right. And we have Adriana Young and Richard Herbert along with us. Richard is the president of Rotary Club of Belize City. And Adriana, you are? The vice president. The vice president. Thank you very much. Of course, we want to say good, uh, welcome and happy Rotaract Week. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we appreciate you stopping in to share a bit about how you guys are celebrating and what you've been up to. But before we jump into that, I want to just uh, get a little bit of a brief history looking at the Belize Rotaract Club, um, its establishment in Belize, and uh, how you differentiate yourself from the other clubs that are associated with Rotary. All right, well, um, the Rotaract Club of Belize City, uh, we were, f they were first inducted on July 1st, 1979. So this is our 37th year of active service hmm. in the country. You know, it's a funny thing because a lot of times uh, people confuse Rotaract and Rotary. Mm -hmm. And while we, we are the same, uh, under the same Rotary movement, mm -hmm. there's a distinction between both of them. Whereas the Rotaractors are more of a, like a youth arm because we fall between the ages of 18 to 30. And Rotary, uh, Rotarians, they are 30 years and older. Mm -hmm. uh, however, there has been a change where people, or Rotaractors I should say, who are between that ages, the between the age of 18, 18 and 30, can also be Rotarians now, but, but there's still a distinction. So mm -hmm. if you're between 18 and 30, 18 and 30, mm -hmm. you're Rotaractor. Okay. What is the general work of these clubs? Um, our club is a community service-based club in addition to professional development for ourselves. So while we're out there and we plan community service projects for the community, we do a lot of self-building and professional development to prepare us for the professional world and also to move on to Rotary if we so desire. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let's talk a bit about what the Belize City Rotary Club uh, has been engaging in. We've had you on several times and you partner with, with agencies, you partner with or, uh, different kind of organizations and kind of just help groups that need assistance, uh, whether it's with manpower or with getting financial resources. So how do you decide who you want to work with in the first place? Well, the decision isn't necessarily up to myself or Adriani because uh, in our club there's a hierarchy where we have the executive board that consists of myself, the president, Adriani, the vice president, the treasurer, and the secretary. Mm -hmm. uh, we are basically the overseers. Well, and then we have some directors. Uh, they are the ones who come up with these projects. And we have, in particular, a community service director. Uh, her name is Ms. Deja Gill. And she's the one who goes out and uh, looks at the community and see how we can assist. Mm -hmm. We don't have a specific target, meaning that we don't just work with children or the elderly. We try to mm -hmm. work with every, each and every, yes, yeah. Yeah. all Belizeans. So it's, um, we have some staple projects that we do year round. Mm -hmm. However, we do try to incorporate new projects when we see the need to. So if there's uh, something in the community that we know we can assist, for example, uh, uh, about, I believe it was, I'm not too, sure when it was but it was around june july the fire in san pedro mm -hmm. uh, we jumped on that even before our year actually officially began we still jumped at that and we decided you know we can assist so we went ahead and did so okay so it, it's it's uh filling in the gap where you can yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. now um how do you fund the projects that you do well, all of our projects are funded by uh, fundraisers from our club. Okay. We have a, also have a, a fundraiser director, um, mm -hmm. the finance director, and they are responsible to planning fundraisers for our club. Mm -hmm. And when we're out there selling and different, it's, everything goes back into the community. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, let's look at the schedule of activities taking place this week in terms of what you guys are setting out to do in the Belize City community. Right. Well, the start today is actually the official day. Um, on March 13th, 1968, the first Rotaract Club was established in North Charlotte, North Carolina. So we, rather than just have it for a single day, we have a whole week to commemorate that. We started a little bit early yesterday. Uh, we normally have a mass where mm -hmm. our, the Rotaractors, we go and we participate in the mass as well. Mm -hmm. So we started off yesterday. 
Um, tomorrow we'll be doing uh, feeding the homeless where we'll be getting up around 5 30 early in the morning so we're gonna go be out there on Albert Street and you know giving a nice little warm breakfast to the homeless out there mm -hmm. uh, that's something we do um, once every three months Mm -hmm. um, of course, we also have on Thursday, we're doing a blood drive. It's an international project where uh, all the Rotora clubs in the world, not only Belize, but in the world, will be participating in this. Mm -hmm. We're trying to break the current world record um, about the amount of blood that is donated. And then on Saturday is our big project. Um, we've been working on a VAT project or a water uh, collection unit project, mm -hmm. and basically, it's, it's different from the typical ones that you see built because we're going to be using um, the, the... Recycled bottles. Yes, the recycled yeah. bottles. To, yes, we're going to be using that to help build the vat. So that's going to be... So you guys are going to build the vat? Yes. yes. Oh. Yeah, wow. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> Who's your technical what, expertise? The expertise yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Mr. Francis Woods. Okay, yes. good. Yes, he will be assisting us. Uh, we, it will, we'll be doing it in two phases. Mm -hmm. So this Saturday will be the first phase where we will be setting the foundation yeah. and of course beginning the structure and then we'll go back again in the future to complete that but yeah. um, the reason why we chose this project is because Rotary has six areas of focus and this falls under one of them which is water sanitation so mm. uh, we decided that this is going to be a big project we wanted to undertake and of course uh, we're going to be doing this project at Stella Morris. Okay, okay. so the, bat the vat is going to be on their compound? Yes. Yeah. Okay perfect. Now when you talk about uh, the work that you do, you're speaking obviously from uh, your role as, as members of the executive, but on a personal level, you're young people, you have jobs, you're starting yes. off your careers. I'm sure you have other uh, areas in your life that are developing. Why are you passionate about being a part of this group um, at, with all the time commitment that it takes? Yes, um, what you said in the end is very important, the time commitment, because a lot of young people turn away when we tell them we meet on Friday nights mm -hmm. at 7.30. <laughs> Everyone's like, we have things to do. Bad yeah. But um, really, when you join Rotaract, sometimes you go wanting to do community service or you're interested in professional development mm -hmm. or whatever your interest may be. But when you join Rotaract and you actually come in contact with people that are interested in the same thing that you are, you know, you start mm -hmm. building each other and you become like a family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like that's what keeps us going and we have everyone there supporting each other and it's like a really amazing movement and outside of our club you know we have other clubs in the country right now we have eight we have two new clubs that just joined on two new rotaracts yes mm -hmm. in punta gorda and corazal oh, good they just joined in last year so we have eight clubs now and the support as a country is very awesome as well so everyone feels like a really big family mm -hmm. so Basically, like, you know, that keeps us coming back because you feel like you're a part of something yeah. bigger than what you are. Have and you seen... You, oh, sorry. Have you, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. No, Go I was ahead. just going to ask, as the president, that means you are going to take uh, some decisions or lead the decision-making process. Right. Um, what I try to do is, while I'm the president, I'm not the one who has a final say. Of course, mm -hmm. we have an executive board for a reason because mm -hmm. I... Yes, I am. Um, you could say more or less I'm like the big head, the big honcho for the club. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I still have to consult the executive board before making a decision. Mm -hmm. uh, we basically oversee everything. So we make sure that all the activities, everything is in order so that the club keeps going on. Because then without uh, having structure, you know, everything's going to be hectic and it's going to be yeah. all over the place. Mm -hmm. And, you know, things might never get done. So and it it isn't as easy as people might think because mm -hmm. you might say oh the president just sits back and just dictates and tell <coughs> and assigns all the tasks but there's a lot more involved because uh being a part being a president mm -hmm. of course there's also what we call uh OCA, it's basically the eight presidents along with our country representative and we basically have to meet and discuss matters involving the country as well so mm -hmm. it's a lot more but um just to add with like to what adriani said um when you go and you give of your time and of course of your effort and you see the smile on the nice little old lady mm -hmm. or the young child that has just received a bag or even the mother who has been struggling to find food you know mm -hmm. that just brings warmth to your heart and mm -hmm. it, it makes you feel that you want to continue doing more and giving more of yourself yeah. but you guys mention and emphasize the idea of professional development yes as young men and women, have you been able to track the progress of some of the rotor actors who have passed through these programs? Yes. 
um, even for our current rotor actors, sometimes you see them come in, you know, they want, they're interested in community service and stuff and they're shy mm -hmm. or sometimes they can't do public speaking. Two years down the road in Rotor, they're like the most outgoing person ever. And, you know, it helps mm -hmm. them at their job as well because sometimes, you know, you need to do presentations, public speaking. And when you're up in managerial positions, you know, you have to be presenting, you have to be delegating and all of that we learn mm -hmm. as Rotor actors. Yeah. Okay. And uh, in celebration of World Rotorac Week, is there a theme that you guys are, are using? Uh, no, we don't necessarily have a particular theme that we are using. Um, of course, uh, we are using this year's Rotary Rotary International Rotary. Team. Mm -hmm. Rotary Serving Humanity. Okay, and so you do so by building your uh, water tank out of plastic recyclable bottles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's going to be That's interesting to see. To see yeah. <laughs> so do you do you have the entire group working on it? Uh, yes, okay. we, we do have the entire group. And of course, we are seeking assistance. Well, we, I shouldn't say seeking, but we do, we will have assistance from uh, interactors you now. Mm -hmm. That's a third one showing in right there. And they're basically more of the high school level. The younger ones. Yes. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, there's the grandparents, the parents, and then like the kids. The, the kids. <laughs> yeah. So they will be assisting us as well with it because uh, it's not a one day task because okay. we still have to fill these bottles with gravel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's going to be donated from uh, Mr. Francis Woods. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, uh, he's going to be assisting us. So we'll need as much manpower yeah. to mm. do this so we're going to be working from probably sun up till sundown sun on, on saturday, saturday. <laughs> all right and uh if somebody decides that they want to uh become a member of rotaract it's by invitation right yes um so how does somebody get one of these invitations well there's more than one way we we, yeah. we say that you have to be invited by a rotaractor however it doesn't necessarily have to be a uh, single person or an individual mm -hmm. what you can do we have a Facebook page mm -hmm. Rotorac Club of Belize City mm -hmm. where you can go and leave a message and uh, ask and of course uh, one of the either the publicity director or myself who man manages the page will mm -hmm. give you an invite to come to meeting you can also oh, okay. send an email to us at rotoracbze at gmail.com uh, requesting or asking about meeting and then of course we're gonna send an invitation out to you as well and um, that's considered your invite right there yes. okay mm -hmm. It's simple enough. Yes. Well, we wish you the best of luck with your projects coming up. So Thank there's you. the blood drive on Thursday, yes. the making of the vat on Friday, and okay. there's something tomorrow as yes, well. The feed the homeless. The in feeding the of the homeless, right? So we wish you the best of luck. We hope people come out. Where will you do your blood drive? Um, at the blood bank. At the blood bank mm -hmm. itself. Great. All right. Well, like I said, best of luck. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. We're going to go ahead now and take our final break. When we come back, we'll have our wrap up. Right.